Hey, hey everybody, Beardo Dude here with a video looking over the new equipment update that was recently released. Uh, it's always nice to get a surprise update, even though it's quite small. It is meant to give us a little bit of a uh, little bit extra as we're waiting for the developers to finish the AI and dungeon generation mechanics for the way forward update, which should be coming uh, in September, probably towards the end of September. Uh, we shall see. There should be a devlog coming up soon. So let's get into it. Before we get started, make sure to hit that like button. And if you aren't subscribed already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It helps out the channel. So before we get into the different equipment, which is the main focus of this video, there are a few other miscellaneous uh, updates, many of which I will skip over. The main one I want to point out is the uh, nerfing of the mushrooms and the uh, basically the efficacy that they once had. You'll now notice the, that roasted pine caps no longer uh, relieve 4% hunger, now is down to 2. And same with the roasted penny bun, it went from 5 to 3. Considering uh, Mushrooms are pretty much the lifeblood of the game. Many players will go forego buying food and just collecting mushrooms, uh, living a strange diet of just eating mushrooms day in and day out. This is a big hit, I'm sure, but will not deter us from collecting and roasting and eating these delicious snacks. The other major update uh, outside of just the new equipment is that much of the equipment and weapons that were in the game file but not available to purchase are now available to purchase. Uh, this includes many of the shields, uh, some of which were only obtainable through grave digging. Many of the items from that loot table are now available from the merchants, though there are still some like the elven garment that can only be obtained through uh, tedious grave digging for that first of the equipment loot tables. So make sure to go check out uh, the different merchants. We'll cover a few of the items here that I found that were new uh, and definitely interesting. But starting off, we'll look at the axes. So the new axes that were added are the Lordly Axe, Exquisite Tabar, Gilded Axe, Alduinian Axe, and the Hel Heavy Aldorian Axe. Uh, all of these just basically give additional options uh, for endgame. They all seem to be more geared towards endgame, uh, with Lordly Axe having the most damage of the five. The I had an issue finding the Lordly Axe. It was rather difficult, uh, along with the Gilded Axe. The two I was easily able to find were the Alduinian Axe and the Heavy Aldorian Axe, and this is with max reputation in Manshire. The exquisite tabar has actually been added to the loot table for grave digging along with one other item. So the only way you'll be able to get this one is through digging graves. You might be lucky enough to find it. I did include a few of the axes which were previously unavailable uh, but now are. The Skadian Chicken, Norse Axe, and Dwarven Axe. Each of these uh, were, well, these two, the Norse Axe and Skidian Chicken, were only available through grave digging. Now you can go and purchase them. They're uh, closer to the lower tier axe. The Dwarven Axe was only available through playing as Jorgrim, but now you can go and buy this one as well. So moving on to daggers, the two new daggers that have been added are the Commoner's Dagger and the Elven Stiletto. The Commoner's Dagger is definitely on the lower end, maybe as a starting dagger, though I imagine there are others that are more useful. It does have an interesting uh, skills energy counts negation uh, compared to others. The other new one is the Elven Stiletto, which is pretty much a one-for-one -one com uh, comparison against the Maris Corde, a mess Mesa Recorde which is basically the end game dagger right now, the most reasonably like obtainable one. Uh, and you'll see they're pretty close. They have slightly different stats. So I guess depending if you want more bleed chance um, and less crit, or if you want more crit, less bleed chance, 
Uh, and then there's also the counter chance versus accuracy. So it really just depends on the kind of build you're going for, but definitely nice to see another end game at, uh, dagger added to the game. There was one new mace added, though you'll see I have a number of them up here. Uh, the Elven Flail, which you can actually purchase from the merchants. Um, pretty nice uh, along the lines of the other flails. It has a rounded edge instead of like a spiked one. Uh, definitely looks cool as well, which is always important. Uh, to the aesthetics of the game. I also found that many of the other axes which you were only able to get through grave digging are now available. Skating Bludgeon, Nistri Mace, Voivode Bludgeon, and Buzz Doggin. I'm probably butchering all of these, but um, each one at different power levels, they're all available through the merchants, either at Manshire or I have also seen them in Osbrook. Moving on, there are now four new amulets, the Gold Medallion, Jibian Pendant, Amber Amulet, and the Lazarite Amulet. Uh, some of these are good for magic, some of these are good for melee. So the Amber Amulet is pretty general uh, physical and nature resistance as well as skills energy cost deduction. The Jibian Pendant and the Gold Medallion are more geared towards uh, magic users where the Lazarite Amulet uh, definitely good for uh, melee, uh, probably going towards the dual wielders. Uh, you have the nature and magic resistance, fumble chance, and health restoration. Um, still the fang amulet is, uh, is going to be a contender in the game as well as the hand amulet for melee users, but it is nice to see the new variation. On top of that, uh, I did include some of the jewelry that seems to have been unlocked, at least that I've never seen them. Uh, it's the gold ruby ring, the gold sapphire ring, both for magic users, and the ruby necklace, uh, which seems to be all around um, pretty good if you want the fire resistance and the fortitude. A big one for magic users is the luxurious belt. Uh, I'm not sure how you were able to obtain it before. But now you're actually able to purchase it. It's pretty easy to get from any of the smiths. And it gives a lot of boost for magic users. Along with the other items that have kind of just been added to the inventory of the different merchants. So town gloves, uh, peasant sash, uh, like the pointy shoes. A lot of stuff that um, was like pretty early game if you would even ever equip these. But they are available now. We'll look at the three new pieces of footwear. We have the town shoes, which give a nice dodge chance boost. We've got the duelist boots, uh, which you would think would be good for dual wielding. But with that one protection, if you're going berserk pr tradition, you're probably going to skip over these still nice uh, low level boots. Uh, and then you have the splint boots, which are more on the armor side, not as heavy as the greaves but still nice protection and stats overall. If you're going dual wield, these town shoes do look very nice uh, compared to the riding shoes, which you're probably using right now. So additionally, we've been given access to three new mage sets of armor and cowl. We've got the Cryomancer, Electromancer, and Chronomancer. Uh, they all look pretty cool um, compared to what we have now. The Cryomancer, uh, spell energy cost, energy restoration, frost resistance, uh, health restoration, nothing too crazy. And we have the Electromancer, which gives spells energy cost, magic power, um, looks definitely more powerful than the Cryomancer, but probably the showstopper for most people is going to be the Chronomancer gear, which gives heavy cooldown duration. Uh, a minus two cooldown duration and dodge chance. So these are this is a very nice set for magic users. 13, 20, so you get 33 from this. Uh, and we'll look at the staves as wit as well, which the Chronomancer staff gives an additional 33 minus 33 percent uh, cooldown duration. So for the staves that match the new sets, uh, we have the Chronomancer staff, which you can see the 33 percent. Uh, cooldown duration is pretty nuts. Uh, it's probably going to be a go-to for many mages. I know I plan to use it on my uh, my Pyromancer build. 
We have the Electromancer staff, which it looks like it's really nice for melee users that are going that route. It looks cool. You've got the shock, like the electricity sparks coming off of it. Very nice. And then we have the Cryomancer, which is really not as good as the other ones, but it still looks pretty cool. It'll probably be one that you save until Cryomancy is actually available to use before you would pick it up. Got that nice frost effect going on there. Moving on to the new chess pieces, we have the Fial armor, which is listed as Dwarven armor on the update. This is actually the Dwarven armor. It's called Fial armor, Fial being uh, where the dwarves are from. Skadian Yushman and the Light Brigantine. Each of them are pretty cool looking uh, and give a different look compared to what we're used to with all of the heavy mail. I uh, can't see too well from where my character standing but definitely all worth picking up they kind of incrementally increase in the amount of protection and debuffs and debuffs the Yushman is nice as it gives a less of a negative to dodge chance um, but are a nice addition to the game the fourth one I will show you uh, in a little bit it is actually not uh, obtainable currently. So going over the helmets, there's uh, two new varieties, uh, four in each of those. We have the Barboot and the Sevier. The Sevier's kind of got the uh, straps here. Uh, there are different varieties that kind of go up from the regular to male to visored. Um, just slight increase uh, going up to visor definitely got the minus two vision because of basically covering your face up they look pretty cool and a nice addition compared to all the other ones the other uh, helmets that were added are the bar boots uh, so these grant more protection um, have a little bit different in, in their stat decreases uh, and also look quite cool and lastly, while we have the barkeep here asleep, are the final four pieces that I have not gone over yet. We have the ornate barboot and the sevier with ear guards. Both of these are only uh, obtainable through grave digging. They have been added to the loot table along with the vagabond knight armor, pig face bassinet, uh, and the decorated warhammer, among others. So the only way to get these uh, pretty cool looking uh, helmets is through digging through graves, which is quite a pain. They definitely look cool. I like the ornate bar boot uh, big time. It looks very cool. Uh, the other male piece, the Elven Brigandine. Um, the reason why I was not able to find this uh, is because if you look at the armor files, the CSV files in the game folder, you'll actually see that is listed as an elven, I believe, elven rare piece. And that basically means that the um, merchants will not sell it. Uh, the merchants seem to draw their item pool based on that last value in the weapon and armor CSV files. Uh, if it's outdoor common, they'll pull it in. If it's elven or if it's special, as in it's unique, then they will not pull in. If you're not looking to go in and make a huge amount of changes to your save file, you could always just go into those and change the um, change the type from elven to you know outdoor common and see if it would pop up. I haven't done too many tests. But I was successful with the axes I wasn't able to find because they're listed as Aldor Rare. But this one definitely looks cool, the Elven Brigandine. It is uh, on the higher end of the other uh, three that we looked at and probably the cooler of the others. It almost makes you look like a samurai like the, uh, the Elven Garment does. The final piece, the Jousting Cloak, I was not able to find this and even starting to go through the game code to see... Uh, the item pools for, you know, boss drops, for the hero sarcophagus, uh, for the grave digging. I was not able to figure out where this is, so it's much like the Traveler's Cloak where it exists in game, but we can't currently get it. It does seem to be bugged, as you can see with my Azure Cloak. Uh, you can see it behind me when I put the Jousting Cloak. There is nothing behind me, so it might be that it's slightly bugged and that they haven't fully added it in. 
Uh, if there are any additional hot fixes after I put out this video in regards to any of this equipment, I'll be sure to update you guys with a pinned comment. Otherwise, let me know below if uh, if you found any of these items that I said were difficult. There were the two axes as well as these four pieces. These are going to be insane to try to get uh, hours and hours and hours of grave digging if you really want to go for it, hopefully. There's an easier way to get them in the future. Um, if not, we may just have to ignore them for now. But I, uh, in preparation for this, I did start digging into the game code, as I mentioned before. So if you guys have questions or would like me to do a video on any of the topics on how anything works in the game, I'm starting to dig through it more and more. It takes a little bit of time for research, but it's definitely possible now. Uh, just let me know in the comments if I got anything wrong. Uh, if any of these pieces of equipment I said were impossible to find, you actually were able to find, let me know. Uh, definitely. And lastly, make sure to like the video. And if you aren't, uh, be sure to subscribe. I put out daily, near daily content, uh, Let's Plays for Stone Shard. I do live streams each week when I'm able to on Sundays. And I like to put out videos centered around Stone Shard, whether those are the more recent game updates, uh, lore around the game, or just general tips and tricks. I also have a weekly podcast that I've been working on with Darley Llama. Make sure to go check out his channel. I have a playlist below. We discuss different topics in the game. Right now, we're kind of focused on the different skill trees that are available and what we like about them, what we don't and just talking about them uh, in greater depth. So be sure to check those out as well. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Hey, not